Today I'm going to show you how to turn bifold doors into custom French doors and this is all the materials and the tools that I used. First thing is remove the bifold doors from the track and if they're like mine they'll easily come off. I laid the doors on a flat surface so I could remove the hardware from the very top of the doors as well as the bottom. My hardware just pulled right out of place but you might need a flathead screwdriver to kind of pry them off. Not shown here but you're also going to want to remove the track and any hardware that was on the closet wall. This next part is completely optional, but I wanted to customize the doors. So if you're wanting to keep the door actually looking the same, but just turn it from bifold into French doors, you can completely skip this step. My idea here was to take strips of plywood and to create a design. I am just going to be laying my strips at a diagonal. There are so many different designs that you can come up with, but the entire process should be about the same way. So here I'm just kind of figuring out the angle that I wanted to lay these strips at. I actually ended up grabbing my square and then I just laid them at a pretty much a 45 degree angle. At this step here, I still have the hinges on the doors to keep them together. That way when I start installing the plywood, I'd be able to make sure that they would match up. So when I do hang them into French doors that the design would match together. Now that I have my design all figured out, it's time to cut the plywood. For the strips, I'm using quarter inch sanded plywood that I bought from Home Depot. And just for a reference, this one full sheet ended up being perfect amount for my 36 inch bifold doors. To cut the strips, I'm using my circular saw and then also my Craig rip cut as a guide. Another option would be to use a table saw or even having your local hardware store see if they would cut the strips for you. And I'm cutting mine into five inch strips. I love using this Craig rip cut. It allows you to set the guide to the size that you're wanting and then you don't have to keep adjusting or marking your plywood so it makes it go a lot faster. It also has a handle on the side so you can just use that to guide along the entire piece of plywood. Once I got to the end though, I did hold the plywood so that way it wouldn't bend rather than holding the guide. And I continued this entire process until the entire sheet of plywood was cut into five inch strips.
Once all of the plywood was cut, I wanted to give the edges an additional sand, so I'm just using my Ryobi Orbital Sander to give it a smooth finish. For this step here, I am using 220 grit sandpaper. Now that all of the strips are smooth, I'm applying Varathane wood conditioner. I like using a wood conditioner before I use any stain. I wait about 15 minutes and then I go ahead and apply the stain. I feel like using the wood conditioner leaves it less blotchy and gives it a more even finish. If you are going to be painting the strips rather than staining, you can skip this step. To apply the wood conditioner and the stain, I like using a melamine sponge. To stain the wood, I'm using Bare Stain from Home Depot in the color Golden Oak. I let all of the boards completely dry and then it was time to attach it to the door. At this step, I did remove all of the hinges from both of the doors, but I did keep them in the same exact location so I could start my strips and make sure that they would line up perfectly. To attach the strips to the doors, I'm using construction adhesive and one inch brad nails. And because these are hollow doors, you're not going to have solid wood throughout the door. So the only real place to add the brad nails is around the perimeter. I also did put a few in the middle just to kind of pin it down until actually the construction adhesive dried. This was probably the most important part. Since I was doing my design at a diagonal, I wanted each of them to match up like a V. So I left the doors in the same exact spot and then just went ahead and attached the two first pieces to here just to make sure that all of the V's would match up. I also used my square to just make sure that it would make that 90 degree angle in the middle.
Once the boards were placed exactly where I wanted it, I used my brad nailer to attach them to the door. The brad nailer that I am using is an 18 gauge Ryobi cordless brad nailer, and I'm using 18 gauge one inch brad nails. I ended up adding about two to three brad nails on the top and bottom of both boards, and then also one to two in the middle, again, just to hold it down until that construction adhesive dried. Once those boards were attached, I then just removed that second bifold door so I'd only be working on one door at a time. I just continued the same exact process all the way down, adding boards with construction adhesive and then also my brad nailer. I did put each board really close together so I didn't need to paint the door, but if you're going to be leaving any type of gap, I would recommend painting that original bifold door so you wouldn't be able to see the color underneath. After the entire board was covered in the plywood strips, I carefully turned over the door. And if you have a second person for this part, I would definitely recommend it. The reason I turned the door over is I was able to actually see what needed to be cut and use the door as a guide. So all of the plywood that you see from the back side will need to be cut to match the existing door. And to do this, I am using my DeWalt cordless circular saw and then also my Craig rip cut as a guide. I am making sure that my blade lines up perfectly with the edge of the door. And using the Craig rip cut definitely made this easy. I got it for like $30 off of Amazon, so I'll also link that in my Amazon shop for you. But if you do not have anything other than a circular saw, I would definitely recommend it.
As soon as both of the edges were now completely flush so there was no plywood hanging over the actual door, I had to do the same thing to the top and the bottom pieces. And the Craig rip cut only extends up to 24 inches, so unfortunately it would not work for the top of the door. Instead, I tried to do this with my jigsaw. And to make sure that I cut it perfectly straight, I'm just clamping a board down to the actual door so I can run my jigsaw right along it. And I did the same thing to the bottom of the door. I also went back with my orbital sander and made sure that it was nice and smooth along the top and the bottom. And then later on, I will do the same thing to the sides of the door. So now I'm working on the second door. I've already laid out most of the strips and I hadn't cut the entire piece of plywood at this time. So I went ahead and cut the rest of it into the five inch strips using the same process as I had previously.
Here's where I started sanding the edge of the door and I ended up just taking off the paint that was on the side and just applying the stain and I was actually pleased with the finish. Another option would be for you to add some edge banding to the edges, but I was actually pleased with how it looked without it.
Okay, back into the house. This is the closet door frame. And because I removed that track, I didn't want to have a gap at the top of the door. So I went ahead and just added this pine trim board. And that way it would cover that gap, as you can see there. I also did a really bad job of filming this whole entire process for you. So I'll try to explain it. Right now I'm just attaching hinges and I am using non-mortise hinges uh, for this install. I am attaching three to each door and just evenly spacing them out, making sure that they're the same on both doors. Using a non-mortise hinge allows you to have pretty much an easy install. You're not having to route or chisel out the mortise for the actual hinge to sit in. And I have everything that I used right in my Amazon shop so you can see exactly what a non-mortise hinge looks like. This step here can be a little bit tricky. Obviously, you want to make sure that the doors are opening up in the correct way. But then also you want to make sure that the hinges are opening the right direction as well. These hinges have a stopping point. So if you have them installed incorrectly, it won't allow the door to open all the way. And to allow the hinge to open in the correct direction on a few of them, I did have to take out the pin and then just reverse the direction. That way it would allow the door to open properly. And to hang the door, it's definitely easier if you have a second person to help. But if you don't, I went ahead and got a shim and put it on the ground and then just sat the door right on top of it just to kind of raise it up a little bit so that when I installed the hinges on the wall, it would be up enough where it wouldn't drag on the ground. Here's what the hinges look like actually attached to the wall. So you can see that I have it right at the edge of the wall and then also at the edge of the outside of the door. You can also see since I'm using non-mortise hinges that I didn't have to chisel 
or route out any mortise. And once you install the hinges to both sides of the wall, you'll be able to see if your doors need any adjustments. This wall right here actually was out of plumb. The middle and then the bottom hinge needed to come out a little bit from the wall. So I ended up adding these shims right behind the hinges. And this just brought the hinge out. So now the entire door is plumb. And that way the spacing in between the doors and the frame is even all the way around the doors. And I will tell you that this took a little bit of just playing around to get it right. I had to end up using longer screws in here as well so it would hit the stud. But now that both doors are up, nice and level and plumb, it was time to just clean up the rest. And this is what the inside of the door looks like. You can definitely either paint it or even add the same design you did to the front to the back. But I'm just removing any of the stain that accidentally went to the back side. And to remove the stain easily, I'm just using my melamine sponge. I also added dummy door handles to the front that I bought from Amazon. And it's so crazy that this is the same exact bifold doors that were just falling off of the track. I also replaced the baseboard that was on both sides of the doors. They still need a few minor adjustments, but I love the look of the doors. And I can't believe that it was all done under $100. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you can easily turn your bifold doors into French doors just like I did. And if you're interested in making these custom built-ins for your closet, I'll be making a tutorial on those next. Make sure to check out my daily post on TikTok at East Coast DIY or Instagram at East Coast Florida DIY. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe.